Get better today, man. Gotta get better. Start to think about being a good football team. We're sure not there yet. 1985 began with a renewed determination on the practice fields at Penn State. For two consecutive years, the Lions had finished out of the top ten after the national championship season of 1982. There was work to be accomplished to return Penn State football to its rightful place among the elite of the sport. Joe Paterno realized there was not only ability, but desire among his players to strive for excellence. There were many 12 to 15 yard completions during a 1985 season that saw Penn State improve week by week. The Lions epitomized the team concept. They played up to their potential, as well as any squad in Penn State history. They did what it took to win, coming from behind in six of their 11 games. This young team that many thought was a year away from maturity grew up quickly, providing its fans with a season of thrills and excitement the 1985 Penn State Nittany Lions played above and beyond. I feel very good about this football team. I feel as good about this football team as about any team I've had. I don't think they're ready to be a great team, but I, they've had great intensity, great leadership. And we've had a superb preseason practice. And I think you have all the ingredients to be a fine football team. I think it's just a question now going out and play, and I'm anxious to see the play. I really am. It took just 50 seconds of the season opener at Maryland for Joe Paterno to find out something about this team. When Michael Zordich returned an interception for a score, it stunned a Terrapin team that some picked for the national championship and set the tone for Penn State's 1985 season. Another steal by Pete Giftopoulos set up a Massimo Manga field goal and State put some fear into the favorite Terps. Junior quarterback John Schaefer attacked the Maryland secondary with a 50-yard aerial to a diving Michael Timpson. And then finished the drive with a bullet to tight end Bob Williams. Lion fans perceived another victory over a Maryland team that had not beaten Penn State since 1961 but the first win of 1985 did not come easy. The Terps recaptured the lead, forcing Schaefer to direct the Lions downfield and into position to move ahead on another Manka field goal. Again, the Terrapins threatened until Lance Hamilton stripped the ball and Trey Bauer recovered. With an exciting 20 to 18 win, a wild, wonderful season was underway for Joe Paterno's 20th Penn State team. The 1985 home opener found Penn State entertaining the Temple Owls on a beautiful sunny afternoon in University Park. More than 83,000 fans jammed Beaver Stadium to enjoy the thrills and excitement of a Nittany Lion football Saturday. Following their dramatic triumph at Maryland, the Temple game would be a further test for the Lions' young offense. Early in the game, John Schaefer teamed with a pair of receivers out of the backfield. First, D.J. Dozier. then fullback Tim Manoa. Climaxing an 82-yard drive, Manoa followed Dozier and Smith into the end zone. 
Lion fans were watching an offense that would roll up 30 first downs, the most for a Penn State team in 14 years. To make this attack more hazardous to defenses, tailback DJ Dozier, one of college football's most dangerous runners, needed to remain injury free. Dozier's score, plus Schaefer's touchdown pass, gave the Lions a total of 24 points. But in this season of late game heroics, it took a clutch play by the special teams off the punting of John Bruno to set up the margin of victory. When Dwayne Downing separated the ball and Marcus Henderson recovered it, the Lions were in a position for a 39-yard Manka field goal. Another tight win for the Nittany Lions. Defense was 10th-ranked Penn State's overpowering force as East Carolina became victim number three. After Bob Onko pounced on the loose pigskin, John Schaefer audible the perfect end zone pass to Eric Hamilton. The Lions' wide-open attack continued to pay dividends resulting in a second period 44-yard drive and enough points to put the game away. With several starters nursing injuries, reserves played key roles, including sophomore tailback Kevin Woods, scoring his first collegiate touchdown. The 17-10 victory over East Carolina marked the 10th time in 20 years that Joe Paterno teams have begun a season at 3-0. Giant Stadium at the Meadowlands found the Lions throwing a relentless defense at the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. On offense, tailback David Clark stunned the Knights with an explosion up the middle. Give us to Clark on the counter, back against the green, he goes across the 25, 30, 35, he's at the 40, 45, he's at midfield, he gets a block from Schaefer at the 35, he gets a block from Smith at the 20, the 15, the 10, and he's dropped out at the three-yard line. The depth at tailback was evident as Kevin Woods blasted in for a 7-0 advantage. Late in the first half, a brilliant goal line stand revealed the Lion defense at its finest. Bob White and Rogers Alexander wiped out this Rutgers runner. While Alexander and Ray Isom ended this sweep, forcing the Scarlet Knights to a field goal. The Lions matched that three points with Manka's 53-yarder making the junior the fifth line place kicker ever with a field goal over 50 yards. Then, one more big play. Motion to the right goes Hamilton. Got the eye behind him, gives it to Smith. Up the middle, 40, 45, 50, 45, goodbye, 30, 25, 20. It's gone all the way. Touchdown, Steve Smith, 63 yard run. With their 13th straight win over Rutgers, Penn State upped its record to 4-0. Nothing seems to turn on Penn State fans like defense. A beautiful autumn afternoon, a rugged rival, a fired up defense, and the heat is on.
Penn State now ranked number eight, and Alabama ranked number ten in the Battle of the Unbeatens. This national television spectacular quickly turned into a bruising, probing game of shifting fortunes between two of the traditional powers of college football. Following a tied touchdown, the Lions countered with a pair of Manka field goals and trailed at halftime by one point. Over the years, defense has become the hallmark of many Penn State triumphs, and the blue and white targeted a potent Alabama attack to showcase one of their finest efforts of the season. Defenders like Michael Zordich, number 43, Shane Conlon, number 31, and Duffy Cobbs, number 16, made the tide pay whenever it touched the ball. John Schaefer piloted a balanced offense, 198 yards through the air, and 205 on the ground. And again, Massimo Manka split the uprights twice to account for the Lions total of 12 points. The second time in his career, Manka has kicked four field goals in one game. Midway through the final period, a Michael Timpson reverse initiated an 80-yard march that would keep Penn State undefeated. Dozier added 15 of his game-high 85 yards. When John Schaefer fell to an injury, junior Matt Kisner came off the bench with one of the surprise calls of 1985. A rollout pass to Brian Cyberling. The dramatic 1917 win over Alabama was an extremely important triumph for the growth of Joe Paterno's young squad. I thought going in that Alabama would, would obviously we'd find out whether we were in, in the big leagues, whether we could play that kind of a team with that kind of quickness, the kind of defense they had. The biggest thing I felt after the Alabama game was, hey, these kids really believe they're good. And they were, from now on in, they're gonna be tough to, to stop. Uh, the next five games, well, obviously we're gonna be crucial be, before we play Pitt and Notre Dame, but I, I really felt that the, after the Alabama game, these guys knew they could beat a good football team and they were on their way. At Penn State, emphasis on special teams play directly affects every game they play. At Syracuse, Jim Coates, a 5'7", 177-pound sophomore walk-on, took the opening kickoff 78 yards, the longest kickoff return for the Lions in five years. Fullback Steve Smith pulled in from the five, and the Lions grabbed the momentum, seeking their 15th straight win over the Orangemen. Later, after the defense had shut down Syracuse, another special teams play led to the Lions' second touchdown. Freshman Michael Timpson streaked 48 yards through orange helmets to the Syracuse 26. Schaefer then looked left and fired right to an open Ray Roundtree. A yard away, Schaefer checked the defense and on a rollout keeper got his touchdown. The Lions gave up 10 unanswered points, then forced a turnover and converted it into a 44-yard Manka field goal. But so typical in this year of living dangerously, the Lions found themselves trailing late in the battle until the defense did it again. Don Graham's fumble recovery gave Penn State possession. It was now up to Schaefer to direct a 42-yard drive to win the game. After Darrell Giles got a first down, Schaefer hit Steve Smith for the winner. As 
time ran out, Duffy Cobbs picked off a Syracuse aerial, sealing a 24-20 Penn State win. The Lions' 6-0 start clinched their NCAA record 47th consecutive non-losing season. Homecoming brought West Virginia to Beaver Stadium, and the Lions continued their defensive and offensive heroics. A steal by Rogers Alexander led to a field goal, and later John Schaefer looked for his favorite target, Ray Roundtree. The 51-yard bomb put Penn State up by 10 and softened the Mountaineer defense for D.J. Dozier. On this run, Dozier overtook Franco Harris in the line record book with more than 2,000 career rushing yards. Schaefer and Roundtree again on a corner timing pass. With only three turnovers in their last five games, the Lion offense was playing mistake-free football, and Dozier finished the scoring and a 125-yard day. The 27 to nothing victory, Penn State's first shutout since 1982, elevated the Lions to a special plateau, becoming only the fifth Division I-A team ever to win 600 football games. The Lions were just a step away from college football's number one ranking. Against Boston College, the Lions' persistent and opportunistic defense kept them within striking distance until the offense could get on track. On a crucial fourth and one, Dozier followed Manoa's block for 42 yards. Crisp blocking all season from interior linemen like Rob Smith, Keith Radisek, Dan Morgan, Stan Clayton, Mark Sickler, Chris Conlon, Mitch Ferrat, and Todd Moles led the Lion offense into the end zone. Then trailing 12 to 10, the alert aggressive defense took over. Number 55, Tim Johnson, batted the BC pass into the waiting grasp of nose tackle Mike Rousseau, who lumbered 21 yards for the score. Victory number eight was sparked by the defense. Well, I think it was a typical uh, Penn State defensive team, and then it was alert, it was aggressive, it hustled, it, it, it could do a lot of things, it was smart enough to change up, and, we, and they were easy kids to coach. I think the defensive coaches did an outstanding job. Most of the great defensive teams we had, had, had a lot of the traits this club had, but had more dominant football players. This club was just uh, very intelligent, very aggressive, uh, very opportunistic. Uh, uh, and, and really made a lot of things happen. So it was typical in that sense of Penn State football team. The Lion defense continued to wreck opponents' game plans. At Cincinnati, Lance Hamilton's interception gave State possession on the Bearcat 40. Enjoying the 10th 100-yard performance of his career, D.J. Dozier made State's dangerous running game apparent to Cincinnati and opened the airways for Schaefer to find Bob Williams for the score. Schaefer came right back to engineer an 80-yard drive, sparked by a 32-yard pass to Dean Demidio. When the junior quarterback rolled out and in, State had enough points to win their ninth straight of 1985. Try as they might, the Bearcats could not stake a claim against the Lions, becoming the fourth state opponent to be held under 100 yards on the ground. With a 31-10 victory, the season-long climb to the top reached fulfillment as Penn State took over the number one ranking in both national polls. A slashing rainstorm didn't seem to dampen Penn State's elevation to number one, as the visiting Fighting Irish of Notre Dame soon discovered. On their first possession, the Lions marched 79 yards with Schaefer laying a perfect pass to Dozier for the score. A 
on defense not only to Joe Paterno's team hold Alan Pinkett in check, but force the Irish into costly mistakes. This Rogers alexander interception set up one of Massimo Manka's record-tying five field goals. Scoring on five of their first six possessions, State kept the pressure on the fading Irish. Ray Roundtree made it to the 11, and Steve Smith plowed in for six more points. The pillar of this team's defense was its ability to force the turnover. Make a mistake, and this team turned it into points. Ray Isom's 39-yard return set the Lions in position for Schaefer's quarterback sneak. A nationally televised 36-6 rain-soaked win over Notre Dame solidified Penn State's number one ranking. An 11-0 record hung on a season-end trip to Pittsburgh, where D.J. Dozier continued to lead the Lions in rushing. The third year in a row, the junior from Virginia Beach proved to be the team's top runner. Dozier's score gave the Lions momentum, and they never looked back. Up way to Manoa, out to the 45-yard line, out to the 50, the 45, he may go all the way, the 30-yard line, the 20, at the 10-yard line, Tim Manoa, touchdown! Less than a third of a minute later, a turnover resulted in more Penn State points. Don Graham intimidated Pitt's quarterback, and Pete Giftopoulos sucked up the football, giving the Lions more than 90 points after turnovers this season. Overall, the defense aggressively manhandled the Panthers. The 31 to nothing shutout of the Panthers finished the Lions' fifth perfect season under Joe Paterno, and they accepted a bid to the Orange Bowl, ranked number one in college football. On the day after Christmas, the Lions departed Pennsylvania for the 1986 Orange Bowl. I really appreciate the governor, Mr. Thunberg, coming out this, this morning to wish us well and to say, uh, send us off in a proper way. Uh, this is a great bunch of young people who have done a super job. This would be Penn State's fourth visit to the Orange Bowl, an opportunity for the 1985 squad to play for a national championship and enjoy the week-long trip to the warm-weather climate of South Florida. Each member of this squad could take pride in the accomplishments of their team. They had met the challenge Joe Paterno set before them, and now they could savor the rewards of a perfect season. On New Year's night, a well-conceived defensive game plan cut into Oklahoma's feared wishbone attack, denying the Sooners their favorite offensive weapon that helped them march over 10 opponents in 1985. Although scoring first, the Lions could not overcome Oklahoma,
Two long-distance Sooner plays did not, however, convince the Lions they were outmanned, only outscored. And the setback, while disappointing, does not tarnish the achievements of this team. A team that not only finished the regular season undefeated and ranked number one, but a team that rose to meet a challenge and represented its university with pride, poise, and character. This team had the, certainly had all the intangibles, had great leadership. And then I think they, they had a, a real genuine uh, we and us attitude. They really liked each other. The next thing that made them good was the fact that they appreciated early in the year they were not a great football team, that they had to work every day in practice to get better. And they really did. I've never had a team practice any better than this football team did. I think everybody has to understand that 85 was a great year. We have a lot of great football players coming back. We certainly have the nucleus to have a very exciting football team in 1986 and a very good football team in 1986. So I think there's a great enthusiasm for next year among the team. But enthusiasm alone will not get it done. It's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a good winter program, a good spring practice, the same kind of leadership we had last year, the same kind of we and us attitude, uh, the same kind of commitment to get better every day in practice. And I think if those things happen, 86 could be a very, very exciting year for us.